Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Today we're looking at something that I've been really looking forward to. This is the new Asus Ryogen 3 AIO. Now there's a number of different changes from the previous generations in this one. They've got magnetic fans, we've got an eighth gen Aztec pump, so that immediately sets my expectations higher for cooling performance. A three and a half inch LCD display. It also calls your VRMs, there's some little fans in there as well. We will do some testing with and without that just to see if it makes that much of a difference. But it supports AM5, RJ1700. There's a number of different configurations you can get it in as well. They do have a 240, a 360, you can get it RGB, non-RGB, and you can also get it with Noctua fans as well. So I'll explain all the pricing as well, because this isn't a cheap product. This is like the end game AIO, you could call it. Um, and we'll talk about that as we go as well. But on the top, we've got a six year warranty. That's a pretty good warranty as far as AIOs go. Um, you generally only get a couple of years. You got the ARGB Gen 2 or a sink, as I said, the Ace Tech pump, and the magnetic daisy chainable fan, so that'll cut down on your cable clutter as well, which is always nice. So, a very nice opening unboxing experience, as you always get with Asus ROG products. All access Asus Gaming Pass. I'm going to cover the little serial number up just in case I need to actually use it for something. So, these are the MF125 fans. On the side, you can see those little pins for the daisy chaining. Let's get another one just to see how the magnetic aspect works. Oh, wow, that's, re that's really strong. Let's see if this is actually strong enough to pick up the other fan. It is. That's really good. Very, very strong as well. Of course, if you're going to shake it this way, it's going to be a bit more you know, prone to coming off. But that way, very strong. There's also a couple of pills on here. We'll just take one off just to show you for now. Nice reflective Asus logo. So pretty impressed with that. Also love the fact that we've got less cables as well because they daisy chain with the push pins. So very cool. So now let's take a look at the actual radiator itself. Now this is a 30 mil thick radiator rather than your standard kind of 28, 27 mil. So you do have a little bit more area for heat dissipation. Let's take a, wow, already nice ROG logo on the side and it's got some plastic covers on the fins as well which is a nice thing you don't generally don't see those um, they do sometimes come a little bit battered so that's a nice little touch this is also has an improved cold plate over the previous generation and also thicker tubing as well for the uh, liquid to go through god look how thick that is that's a chunky boy so on the pump end, we've got a nice copper cold plate pre-applied thermal paste. Of course, as I said, that's that S-Tech 8th gen unit. So we're expecting some good performance. Other end, of course, we've got our big three and a half inch screen. This is full color. will support up to 32 megabytes and 2000 frame GIFs, which of course we'll try out when we get into some testing. Little Republic of Gamers logo underneath. That also is magnetic, so you can take that off, make your installation nice and easy, and you just put it back on afterwards with the magnets inside. There you can see that little VRM fan that I mentioned. We'll do some testing with and without it just to see if it does keep the VRM temperatures down. We're putting that back on. On the end with the cables, we've got a four pin PWM for the pump. There's a USB which will go to Armory Crate so you can control everything through that. Then we've got some nice thick hosing down to the radiator itself. Nice tight weave on there as well. You can't see through that at all. There is a little Velcro cable tie, but you can obviously take that off if you don't want it. I've gone ahead and taken off one of the covers, but we've got a nice pristine radiator on the other side. Quite a common thing you see with AIOs when they arrive is a couple of fins that are a little bit bent, but that helps obviously prevent that. And it's nice to see a bit more of a pristine product come through as well. Um, rather than something with a bit of a dent straight out of the box. There's also some holes for these screws to go through as well. I'm not sure if you can quite pick that up on camera, so you're not going to get any fins being squashed when you screw your fans in. But those gaps, I think, are something we should really expect nowadays anyway. So let's have a look in this other bag of accessories just before we actually get it installed. So here are the cables that will connect our daisy chain fans. There's a female and a male, so depending on which side you want to connect it to, you've got both options covered. So I'm just cutting in with a bit of footage to show you this connection in a bit more detail. We've got a four pin for PWM and a five volt addressable for RGB. This is the female side. So for example, if we take it to the male side of the fan, it will only connect one way because there's a little notch and then that will go into the little slot. So you know you're gonna get it the right way around. Otherwise it just won't connect like you see there. So you know you've got it the wrong way around. So just a quick rotation and that it all sits nice and flush. We've got all of our different mounting hardware. So we've got different thumb screws depending on different mounting options. There's all of our radiator ones as well with fixed washers, which is always nice to see. This looks to be mounting for AM4 and AM5. And then we've got our Intel backplate. There's also some instructions and some stickers 
then that's the last of our accessories. So before we put this into a case and show you the performance and show you the screen and the gifts and things like that, let's talk about pricing. Now I'm gonna put it on the screen so you guys can see, but there are, like I said, four different options. You've got the non-RGB, ARGB, 360 and a 240. Now pricing for this can be wildly varied depending on what you go for. This starts at 349 pounds for a 240 mil version. No price difference for the RGB or non-RGB version there. Then the 360 non-RGB is £409. Then we have the top-end model coming in at £449. Literally eye-watering amounts of money for this. It's really quite hard to kind of wrap your mind around. This is a £450 cooler. Obviously the most expensive cooler that I've ever tested and probably that we'll see for a while. Um, so there are obviously a number of factors you need to consider with this is, of course, this is for the highest of end systems it's going to be a case of you want the best of the best you know money's not really an object chuck in whatever you can um, so we do need to obviously take in the money factor to account with uh, kind of thoughts and things but i think we really need to get this into a system and check out the thermals what the screen can do then that will give us a little bit more to see if the price is justified or not so now onto Armoury Crate. This has been a little bit of a problematic experience for me in terms of the uh, fan speeds and things, but we can look at the settings and GIFs and control that we have for the actual pump top with the three and a half inch screen. So on the left hand side, you've got the little eye and I'm going to click ROG Origin 3. This is the landing page that I'm on just because I've actually set a, a default thing for it to be doing, but um, by normally what you'll see is a customized slideshow and then this is the landing page that you'll see. The Republic of Gamers logo is what you'll get straight out of the box. It will just kind of rotate. Even when the PC is on, it will still light up and do that little uh, animation. And then you can change those. Let's so just go through those so you can see what they look like. The second one's personally my favourite out of these ones. More of a kind of city vibe there. That last one's quite nice actually as well. Um, going along the tabs at the top, we've got a wallpaper option, so you can pick a static image if you'd rather have that. Not everyone might like the uh, you know, animations distracting them from what they're doing. So you can have some options on there as well. You can also put some text in there as well. I'm going to apply that and you can position that way wherever you want as well. So you left or right alignment. If we press enter a couple of times, you can bring it further down. So you can just put it under the ROG logo. And again, you can pick any of the backgrounds to go with that as well. we pick a different one there. So then going along, we've got a time option. So you can have a 24 hour standard clock. No different backgrounds for that one. It's a kind of a default thing. A couple of options would be quite nice, I think, personally for that one. All of these options you can stack as well. So for example, you can have an, a custom animation. So say this one, then we're going to add a wallpaper. Maybe we're going to add this um, for a little bit. And we can add another one that will be the time and then those will all cycle through as well so if you want to have a few options rather than just one you can add that on so i'll just let that play around so you can see how that looks you can easily remove those by just clicking the x in the corner as well now of course with the standard default animations we have got custom options so i have got a couple just of presets to show you i think cyberpunk theme ones are going to fit this really well it will take a little while just to get that ready to actually play on the screen so you just need to be patient for that, but I'm sure it will look nice when it's done. Pretty cool. I actually quite like how that looks. Let's try another one I've got, which is a car that's driving along. So now let's just apply that. There we go. That one I think is my favourite of the two. That looks really great just kind of driving by. Not very distracting either, which is a nice little thing, especially if you're gaming. So then going to the drop down tab on the left hand side, we've got a hardware monitor option as well. If you'd rather go for something a little bit more practical, then you've got three different options, Galactic, Cyberpunk, and then a custom one. Personally, I think the Cyberpunk is my favorite out of that. So you can have a background, which you can pick a certain color, and then the text can be different. So say red on black. And then you can have different values of information. So you can have single, dual or triple. So you can just bring these drop down boxes in. So fan speeds, voltages, temperatures, frequencies and things like that. Just apply that and then you'll get your own custom designs on there. Again, you can stack these on the bottom if you'd rather. But personally for me, I'd probably go for a standard dual info 
we'll go for temperature of the CPU and then temperature of the, the GPU, I think is always a good kind of go-to. There you go, liking that. Now, one thing I have noticed is you can't stack a wallpaper or an animation GIF with a hardware monitor as well, which is a little bit of a shame. Personally, I like to have the GIF of the car running and then have my temperatures and stuff come up every now and again. So that would be something I'd like to see Asus implement in the future. So last but not least on the screen, it does have text on it that says Republic of Gamers in the portrait mode. If you happen to have a scenario in your case that you just physically cannot put it in portrait mode, you do have an option to flip all of your images and GIFs and things to portrait. So should you actually need to do that, there is that option on there. Onto the review then for the Asus Ryzen 3. This has actually been quite a lengthy procedure to do. It's taken me most of the week to actually get this done for the testing and things like that because there's been a few hiccups I will tell you about as well. Um, and my notes are pretty much just a script now because there's so much that I have to say, but I'm thinking that you guys want to know about it considering you're going to be spending close to £500 on it if you're going to buy one. So the installation, first and foremost, was very simple. Classic Atatech design, so you've got a back plate, four thumb screws. They do differ depending on what platform you're using. So LGA 1700 has a slightly different one to the AM5. They have different heights than the IHS, so you need to make sure you use the right one. Apart from that, very simple. Installing the radiator is very simple as well, especially with the magnetic fans and connectors. All snaps together with one cable, very easy. Um, the orientation that I'm using in this one is in the front. It's not what I'd usually use, I'd put it in the roof but I was using a Corsair H170i Elite LCD before and that was a 420mm radiator and the physically only place I could put it was in the front of the case. So I've done the same with this one to keep it fair, so we're comparing to that, um, but otherwise I would put it in the roof. So just a little thing to note, because a lot of people will say, oh, you're not supposed to mount it that way, but it's literally just for the testing. Um, and then I'll put the other one back in after. I started with the cables for the fans at the bottom as well, but I didn't have enough reach with the four pins, so I ended up swapping them around. But with the daisy chain and magnets, very, very easy to do. Just literally threaded it through, found roughly the position and it just snapped straight into place. Really strong magnets on that, which are really helpful, especially in that kind of scenario. Um, when you do need to change things about. Um, I'm going to run some B-roll now of the aura effects that are on these fans while I talk about the next part because it's quite lengthy. Um, then you can see the fans effects as well if you're interested in that. So going back to that daisy chain cable makes it very easy of course for installation on RGB and power and things but very difficult to test with. I usually use these Noctua low power adapters um, for my testing because it keeps at a consistent RPM plug straight into the power supply here at 1600 RPM but Obviously with that data chain cable, we don't have that option and you can't put three fans on one adapter. It just was too much for it. So I had to use Armoury Crate and this is where the little bit of weirdness started. So Armoury Crate only picked up all the three fans one time. Once I restarted the system, then Armoury Crate only registered a maximum of 1,217 RPM for all three, as opposed to the over 6,000, which is obviously over 2,000 for each. It just would not allow me a single bit of control over the speed of the fans at all, and it will just basically stay pinned at running them full speed, no matter where I adjusted them, even using them on a curve or a consistent RPM, which is an option on Armoury Crate. Before anyone says about correct headers and things like that, I've checked all of that already. I even looked in the manual, but what I thought was correct anyway. So I ended up going into the BIOS and configuring it on there. It could be the system, just the configuration, might be a BIOS thing, um, but I spent so long on it by this point, I just needed to get the testing done. So BIOS control it was and then I set those three fans to 4800 RPM, so obviously 1600 each. Um, before we talk about temps, I just want to talk about the display quickly. Obviously a very nice size and there's a lot that you can do with it. I would like to see options for adding a GIF with something for the monitoring section, because I know a lot of people might like to see a GIF on, this, on their display and then see some temps and stuff just so they can monitor both. That's probably something that could just be added with an update. Uh, it's nice to be able to set the screen to portrait as well if you have to go that route, but I would personally say just keep it horizontal if you can, because obviously there is text on there, so it is designed to go that way. But portrait options are there if you simply have no choice but to put it in that way. Um, performance wise, so as I said, we're comparing to the Corsa H170 Elite LCD. That's the version one as well, not the Elite XT or the, the new one. Now you've got to bear in mind that's a 420mm radiator against the 360 we're using here and a 7th gen Azatec unit whereas this one's an 8th gen. The test bench is a 12900K, you've got a Z690 Hero, 32GB of DDR5 at 5600MHz and then a Seagate Fire Cuda 530 
all in the Fantex Etho 2 Pro, if anyone's wondering about the case. So I first did a bit of control testing with the Corsair before I installed the Asus and did all this on the same day as well, so there weren't any variables with weather and things like that. We got a high of 92 degrees on the Cindy Bench 10 minute run. Room temperature was 26.7, so we got a doubter of 65.3. Then the Asus on the same 10 minute loop a little bit later in the day gave us a high of 81. Room temperature was 25.7, so that's a doubter of 55.3, giving us exactly 10 degrees difference between the Asus and the Corsair that has the older generation pump, but a bigger surface with that 420 mil radiator. So a whole 10 degrees um, drop which was pretty actually surprising to see when I looked at it back in uh, hardware info. As a quick reminder as well I test with Cinebench because it's the worst case scenario for your system as obviously there's a lot of stress. Day-to-day -day gaming and general usage will result in lower temperatures but I obviously need to push these as far as I can to see what their maximum potential is rather than just running you know, average kind of tests. If you're wondering as well the VRM fan in this has a negligible effect maybe one degree if you're lucky um, and then it's going to be very loud at high RPMs as well. So I just personally set that very low, if not turn it off, um, because it doesn't make that much difference. So for the little bit of testing that I did, obviously great performance, you've got some great build quality and also the screen functionality is great as well. And we'd like to see those little changes that I mentioned, but otherwise it is a pretty well-rounded product until you get to the price, of course, that is the whopping £449 for this model. There's only really, two boats that i can see people buying this for there's if you either have to buy it because it's an asus rg product you know because you're a fanboy of the stuff um or you just uh, throw money at a system that's being put together and you want the best that's currently on the market which as far as i can tell is this um as you've got that three and a half inch screen and the eighth gen aztec unit as well to keep things nice and cool um, for a bit of context, the NZXT Kraken Elite 360 is currently £259. That's got a 2.36 inch screen. Similar functions with GIFs, images, monitoring, etc., and stuff like that. But that's a 7th Acetec unit rather than an 8th that is in this one. And then again, Corsair H150i LCD XT, which is again similar 7th gen Acetec with a screen, but that's 309. There's nothing that matches the size of the screen. Um, that this has on offer at the moment. That's until Height released that thick, literally that's what it's called, AIO later on in the year, and that's got a whopping like five inch display on it. So if you want a big screen, then this is obviously the best that you can get at the moment. And then the performance wise, if you want something with the performance, but not too worried about the screen, the Asus Ryo um, is an eighth gen as well. And that comes in about 290 pounds at the moment. So you can save yourself a considerable amount of money if you want the performance, but aren't too fussed about the screen. So I think I can say this is one of the best arrows that you can currently buy with the performance and also the functions of that screen. But those features obviously do come at a price and obviously that's up to you whether you're willing to pay for them. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. I did try and include as much detail as I could. Obviously I did say it's become more of a review than an overview. But I do like to you know, tell you all the experiences and things that I've had and you can obviously make your own decisions whether uh, you like the sound of things that I've told you or not. So that's it for this video. I will include links and things down in the description box below if you want to pick one up, also the other counterparts that I mentioned as well. Stay tuned to see this in some builds and things like that. We'll obviously use it a bit more than just this video. Uh, get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss that. But I think that's it for this one. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for Aces for this out for me to look at and I'll see you all in the next one.